Kasara felt her heartbeat pick up as she twirled away from Ka, his hand holding hers as she spun. Her dress picked up around her legs, spreading out around her like a black flower. She hoped Ka didn't miss her cue. She was very aware that he could hardly keep his eyes off of her, let alone made this entire exercise worth it. Going back to him, she couldn't help the smile that spread across her features as Ka vanished from sight. She could still feel his hand holding her and felt her body press against his as they moved across the dance floor together. Her smile remained in place as she turned to face him, taking his hand and letting him tilt her back as he reappeared and she vanished so that she was leaning over with an invisible partner. Kasara, of course, could still see him and she knew that he could both feel and sense her. A thrill ran through her body as she gazed up into his blue eyes. He was loving this as much as she was. A tremor ran through her leku as he brought her back up and she reappeared once more. He put his hands on her hips, guiding her through their fellow dancers, vanishing as they walked and lifting her up for a moment and spinning her around. To the observers, it would have seen as if Kasara was floating through some invisible force. Bringing her back down, they continued to dance, switching their invisibility back and forth so that sometimes Ka danced the phantom partner, and other times Kasara was spun around wildly, guided by an invisible hand. As the music continued and the pair danced, they began to develop an audience who watched as the two Jedi went back and forth. Kassara delighted in their gawking and took pleasure in the envy she sensed some of them. The music came to a fiery halt as Kassara spun around and let Ka catch her in his arms, finding their chests pressed together closely, and she looked up at his eyes with a giddy smile fixed on her features. He returned the smile, and for just a moment Kassara imagined herself leaning in and kissing her partner passionately. She stopped herself, though, her smile flickering flirtatiously as she turned to their clapping admirers. Well, Princess Halfen said as she approached the pair of them, the two of you certainly are having fun, I see. To Kassara's surprise, the princess was actually smiling as she snapped her fingers and a servant carrying a tray of drinks came forwards. With a gesture from the princess, the servant offered the platter to Ka and Kassara, who both took glasses off the sparkling, fizzing beverage. Keep doing this and you'll ruin my dear cousin's complexion, she nodded over her own glass towards Prince Vranik, who was watching Kassara and Ka intently. My, he does seem aggravated. I'm sure he'll find someone else to suit his needs, Kassara said with a smug smirk. She turned to look up at Ka. Go again? He returned the smirk and nodded, finishing his drink and returned the glass to the tray. I don't see why not. My, the princess said with a smile of her own. The pair of you are intent on rubbing it in. Kassara grinned eagerly as she took Ka's arm, returning her own empty glass. We only have so long before you decide who the new ruler is going to be. Might as well enjoy ourselves. Kassara returned to the dance floor with Ka, and the pair resumed their display. Kassara did her best not to laugh with glee as she again found herself being swirled, spun, and caught by an invisible partner. Her black dress swirling around her legs. She was having the time of her life. And when the next song came to a close and she found herself in Ka's arms once again, with her leg raised and wrapped around him as she ran her hands through his hair, she felt her body trembling with anticipation. Lifted up against Ka as his fingers touched her bared back, setting her skin on fire with their touch. Was she really this excited over this? Wondering that answered the question on its own accord, and she licked her lips eagerly, looking up at him and seeing a similar excitement echo in his own eyes. Seeing that he was thinking the same, or even if it was only similar thoughts to her, sent shivers through Kazara's body as he lowered her down once more and the next dance began. She could do this all night long. Airs be damned. They could watch and envy until the sun rose. Three dances later and Ka and Kasara were standing alone on the balcony outside the ballroom, overlooking the ornate cityscape of Empress Teta. Kasara was sipping another glass of whatever wine was being served as she leaned back on the railing, looking at Ka playfully. Thanks for playing along. He smiled at her. Well, it sounded fun, and honestly, seeing their faces was great. Kazara smirked at him playfully. So you were looking at their faces while we danced. Ka smiled and looked down at the banister. Well, I caught a look at some of their faces. Oh, Kazara teased. And did you see a certain prince's face? I did, Ka said as he sipped the contents of his glass. He was very irritated that you never asked him to dance. Good, Kazara said smugly. Maybe next time he'll think about trying to make himself look good by using me. Well, Ka said as he looked over at Kasara with a smile. Dancing with you will make anyone look good. Kasara smiled back at him as she leaned her head against his shoulder. Hmm, well, you're not wrong, she replied smugly as she turned and looked over her shoulder. If I fell from here, would you save me? Ka blinked in surprise, taken aback by the question. Yes, of course. But you let me fall on a fountain the other night, Kasara said accusingly. It was a fountain, Ka replied, motioned with the drop over the railing. This is a palace balcony. I wonder, Kasara said with a playful smile as she walked her fingers across the railing of her glass, flicking it with a finger and casting it over into the abyss. Oops. Kessa, Ka said warmly as he stepped towards her. Careful, she said with a teasing smile as she lifted herself up onto the railing so that she was seated on it. You might push me. Oh. Ka was there in an instant, both hands holding her arms firmly as he looked into her eyes warningly. Ver. Ka watched as Kasara swallowed, noticing the ripples of her raintails as she looked up at him in surprise. Don't, he said flatly. 
Swallowing again, Kassara tried to regain her composure. She smiled at him. She reached up, looping her arms around his neck as he moved her hands to her waist. What? Afraid I might do it. She leaned in and touched her nose to his. I'm not that drunk tonight. He smiled at her, his eyes still warning her against teasing. I don't trust you. You're too wild. Hmm. Kassara laughed a little, leaning against him fully now. But you like it. Ka looked down at his fellow Jedi with a mixture of uncertainty and honest attraction. Kassara drunk had been a true handful, but she seemed no less incorrigible sober. Remembering their trip here and what she'd done on the Starliner certainly proved and reinforced the point. Still, she wasn't wrong. He did enjoy her company, and though he was fairly sure that she had no intention of throwing herself off the balcony, he wasn't completely certain she wouldn't either. So, Kassara asked as she wriggled in his arms, If I pulled both of us over, what would you do? Ka scowled at her, pulling her closer towards him. Teleport both of us back up here. Hmm, Kazara hummed as she slid off the railing and leaned in Ka's arms. Oh, that wouldn't be so bad, then. Ka looked down at his partner for a moment, his arms still around her as she leaned against him. He reached up and stroked her brain tails gently, soliciting a rippling shudder through them in Kazara's dire body. That feels nice, she murmured. I could stay like this all night. Ka was going to say that they could stay like this for a while yet, but he was stopped when he sensed a sudden surge of emotion behind them in the direction of the ballroom. Kassara must have felt it as well, because she immediately released him and turned to see what had caused it. With his partner in tow, Ka re-entered the ballroom and found a buzz of voices. What's going on? Kassara asked, curiously looking around them. I'm not sure, Ka replied as he gazed at the excited faces of their fellow guests. Something big, though. The energy is pretty noticeable. Noble Jedi, Princess Halfin said as she approached them. I take it while you were enjoying one another's company, you missed the news. News? Kassara inquired as Ka looked at the princess curiously. Yes, dear Alicia has been removed from the succession. She is younger than either myself or Imura, so it was deemed that she had no place in this discussion. Carl looked at Kassara, who was frowning. It made sense that the younger of the three heirs had been removed from the succession. After all, with three heirs to choose from, any means to eliminate a candidate would be examined. Still, remembering the bubbling princess, he did feel bad for her. She'd seemed like a sweet, if somewhat oblivious girl. Where is the princess? Kassara asked suddenly. Is she all right? Hmm? Princess Halfin blinked. Oh, she's fine, the poor dear. Her parents have taken her home. I imagine she'll be around again as this whole thing continues. Kassara frowned at this, but Ka had other questions now that things seemed to be moving. If it isn't too forward for me to ask, who has the stronger claim to the throne? The princess raised her eyebrow, smiling crookedly. You expect me to answer that? She gestured around to her fellow nobles. It would be rather self-incriminating or self-aggrandizing to find who heard me voice my thoughts. With that, the princess turned to leave, leaving Ka and Kassara amidst the throng of guests as the chatter from this new development continued about them. And then there were two, remarked Ka dryly. Kassara nodded. Heck of a way to spoil a party. She frowned, crossed her arms over her chest as her face soured. Hide me. Ka turned to see Prince Vranik coming towards them, his eyes intent on Kassara. You can hide yourself, you know. Ka said glibly. We proved that tonight. Kassara made a face, her brain tail switching. I know, but I was hoping you'd save me. I assume my dear cousin has already told you what has happened, the prince said with a glance at Ka before his eyes turned to Kassara. We were informed, Ka said as he took Kassara's arm in his. I'm afraid Knight Diligus and I were about to retire for the evening. Prince Vranik frowned, looking up at Ka questioningly. I wasn't aware you spoke for her. He doesn't, Kassara said with a smile, but he's not wrong. We were preparing to leave. Will there be another party tomorrow? There won't, the prince said with a poorly hidden snarl of annoyance. I was hoping that we might dance again. I'm sorry to dash your hopes, Kassara replied with a sultry smile, but I'm quite exhausted. For added effect, she leaned against Ka, who obliged her by putting an arm around her supportingly, which seemed to play a total rout for the prince. So I see. Well, I hope you enjoyed your evening. It was exquisite, Kassara assured him pleasantly. Your planet is wonderful. Yes, well... Good night, Jedi, the prince said as he turned and walked purposefully away. After he was out of earshot, Kassara giggled, drawing Ka's attention. Did you sense anything from him? He's furious, Ka replied, and he's wondering what is between us. Kassara's brown eyes sparkled with excitement. You think there is anything? Ka looked at her for a moment before he guided them both through the crowd towards the exit. I suppose there might be. With a laugh, Kassara leaned against him. Well, don't keep me in suspense. I'm curious to know the answer. So was he, Ka mused to himself. He was starting to wonder for himself if there was something here between both him and Kassara. He kept out of her mind as requested, so it was impossible for him to know the depth of her affections, or if it was just a shining surface that would tarnish once used. However, for the time being, he decided that he enjoyed his flirty partner and her antics. For however long their acquaintance lasted, he'd enjoy it. The ride back to their estate was a quiet yet intimate one, as Kassara rested her head against Ka's shoulder, listening to his heartbeat. She'd enjoyed tonight, and thinking about their little stunt made her smile. 
However, she was troubled by the way things had changed at the party. The youngest heir was a sweet girl from what Kassara had seen, and that she'd been passed over so easily and seemingly without care from her family. It made Kassara think of her own experience with family. She hadn't been in this sort of situation. She'd been doted upon and loved until, well, everything. Thinking of the time after that, when the good times had ended, she didn't know what to think or say. She wouldn't share it with anyone. Not even Fern knew the whole story. She looked up at Ka, studying his features curiously. Would he judge her, she wondered, if he knew about her past? He was one of the most accepting Jedi she'd met, and they were of comparable age. She never thought of herself as solitary. Even with Fern, there was a subtle barrier she'd never let herself cross. With Ka here on this planet, well, let her pretend, if only for a little while, that things were okay. That she wasn't alone. Even knowing in the back of her mind that it would come to an end with their mission, it gave her a sense of ease knowing that, at least for a while, her accepting companion would be a constant for her here. Landing at their estate and entering it, she hesitated as they reached the door to his chambers, wondering herself as she dared to ask what she wanted, and then deciding that she had to do exactly that. She felt too lonely without company. Ka, she said quietly, not meeting his gaze. Yes, he asked, turning to look at her as he opened the ornate door to his quarters. Would you... She frowned a little, annoyed at her own hesitance. Why should she be flustered by this? She'd done worse. Would you let me sleep with you? He blinked, the surprise evident on his features as he stumbled over his response. I... I... Kessa... What? I... She frowned in aggravation, pushing past him suddenly and walking into his chambers. I don't want to be alone. She felt him follow her into the reception room, knowing that she was making a scene but not caring. She almost expected him to throw her out, but then she heard the click of the door as it closed. Her heartbeat picked up as she felt him approach her, placing his arms around her shoulders. Are you all right, Kessa? She turned into him suddenly, wrapping her arms around his neck and pulling him into a longing kiss. She didn't try to apologize for it, or withdraw. She returned it tentatively, and she increased her passion, pulling him against her with eager desperation. He was a hesitant accomplice in this, but she didn't mind. She just wanted his affirmation in whatever form it took. After a moment of kissing, he helped her out of her dress. She took a momentary pleasure from the feeling of the fabric sliding down her skin, before she attempted to help him out of his things. He had another trick up his sleeve, however, as he suddenly became immaterial. Kassara actually gasped as she realized she too had entered a similar state, and watched as his clothes and her remaining garments fell to the floor before they both rematerialized. Neat <laughs> trick, she purred, leaning into his arms. He snorted, saying nothing as he guided them both into the bedroom. Kassara let him lift her into the bed and curled up beside him. The passion of their kiss seemed to have faded, but she wasn't trying to get sex out of him. Laying on the crook of his arm, her brain tails trembled emotionally. She just wanted to feel that someone would be there when she woke up. That he wouldn't discard her the way that Princess Alicia had been, or the way she discarded dozens of one-night flings. She was certain he wouldn't. And as she drifted off to sleep, she was equally sure that he would still be there the next night and the night after that.